Hi, and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today with us, we have Wendy Murphy. She's the president of Belmont Women's Club. Welcome, Wendy. Nice to be here, Maribel. Wendy, let's talk about the Women's Club. How did it start and how did you get involved? Well, the club itself started back in 1920, even before then, but they became a formal organization back in 1920 alongside a lot of other women's clubs around the country that were celebrating women's enfranchisement into public life when we won the right to vote. So it was very important at that time for women to find a place to come together outside the home. And Belmont was no exception. There were women here who just were so excited about having the right to vote. They became a club um, and needed a place to meet because there were hundreds and hundreds of women that wanted to be part of the Belmont Women's Club, but nobody had a house big enough for them to get together and join. So eventually, and in 1927, um, they found the Homer House, which is on Pleasant Street across the street from the police department. It was uh, scheduled to be destroyed. A developer had purchased it and was gonna tear it down, build a bunch of houses on the lot. And the women uh, at the women's club kind of conspired with the town leaders to snatch it away from him, purchase it for $25,000, which was a steal back then, and um, literally make that house their clubhouse, but also protect and preserve the house for future generations. And today, in 2022, that's exactly what we're still doing. We maintain the very beautiful historic 1853 um, Homer House we welcome the public, we host functions there, we have speakers, we gather there for social events, and we continue to maintain the history of the club, doing a lot of the same things the women did 100 years ago, but also doing a lot of new things too. Yeah, um, so, so for example, we have an event on October 28th at the house celebrating Halloween. We're working together with the recreation department and the library, we're hosting uh, families and hoping Lots of people come. We're going to be giving away pumpkins. We're going to be doing pumpkin carving, lots of crafts and activities. But even more interesting is that the rec department ha um, owns and is going to bring this gigantic screen and put it on our front lawn and project a Halloween movie for the kids. So there'll be treats and lots of activities. We did it last year for the first time. It was a wonderful success, and we're looking forward to doing that again this year. And that's the reason for this interview. We want to invite all of you to join us to the Women's Club on October 28th, 4.30 in the afternoon. Everything starts. Um, the movie won't run until, I think, 7.15, but um, we're going to start doing pumpkin carving at 4.30. And why do you think it's important for the Women's Club to start this tradition? I know we had the Easter uh, Bunny. It was an amazing event. Yeah. Why do you think we, it is important to do this? Well, well, the Women's Club has a long history of doing community service. We always, from the beginning, have found reasons to give back to the community. Sometimes it was because there was a war going on and we wanted to do things to help soldiers. Sometimes it was uh, just that people were struggling. And, you know, during the Depression, we wanted to make sure that people had basic life necessities. During COVID, long before you could buy big boxes of masks, um, and there were literally no masks to be found, uh, one of the women at the women's club so started sewing them from hand and we reached out to the community and, and just donated them, particularly the senior center. We wanted to make sure people who were older and more vulnerable had masks as soon as they could get them. Uh, so it's just the spirit of our organization has always been to find out what people need and find a way to give it to them. And we're still doing that today. Um, you know, People think of the Women's Club as kind of a fuddy-duddy, these old women up there playing mahjong. Or, uh, the fact is, <laughs> there was a time when we were an only women's club. You had to be a woman to join. I think you even had to be married at some point. Um, that is no longer true. We welcome men. We have lots of men members. Uh, Will Brownsberger, Mark Polillo, Sammy Baghdadi, to name a few, have been members for a long time. And um, we are a 501c3, we're a charitable, a charitable organization, which is important for people to know. We're not a private club where we're just raising money for our own purposes. Many years ago, we donated the land that the Homer House sits on to a public trust to make sure it never gets developed in the future. And because we're a charity, the money we raise just goes to maintaining the house. It's expensive to maintain that 
very large mansion. And talking about the, the maintaining and the improvement, what are the things that you're currently doing there? Yeah, right now, thanks to um, a, a grant, we got a grant from the town in conjunction with the state called a CPA grant. And thankfully, um, we got that money because even as hard as we work to raise funds on our own, we, we will never have the kind of funds we need to do some of the big projects, like restoring all of the windows. Again, the house dates back to 1853. Many of the windows in the house date back to 1853, and boy, do they need repair, both in terms of functionality, can you open them and you know have ventilation, but even there's some with broken glass, so it's a safety problem. If we, win, if we want to invite the public in, we want them to be safe. So with this wonderful grant from uh, CPA, we now have um, a contract with a, an organization called Window Woman. Funny enough, right? We didn't pick her because she was a woman, but she happens to be amazing. And her specialty is restoring windows, windows. in Great. historic properties. It's going to take a long time. We're only about a quarter of the way through because literally all of the windows need mm -hmm. repair. But she's doing incredible really incredible work and we're so grateful. We're also um, adding parking spots. The house, because it was built in 1853, has only ever been built to facilitate horses and buggies, I think. You know, we have this beautiful grand circular driveway, um, but no real place to park lots of cars. So when we rent the house, which is an important source of income for us, and it's a beautiful place to rent where you can host parties and um, you know, we've had book parties there and baby showers and weddings. It's a beautiful place to have a wedding or a small event. Um, but people always ask, where are we going to park? And it's difficult the way the house is situated up on a hill. So thankfully, we have permission from the town now to add parking spots. If you're looking at the house to the left, there's a lot of um, trees and grass and, and a lot of weeds. That's where we're going to build angled parking to the left, which will be nice. It won't be a lot of parking but it will be nice parking, safe parking, and it will really show the, the town that this is a place where the public is welcome. Right now, I think people look at it sometimes and think, what goes on up there? What, what, what kind of house is that? Who owns this house? Some kids say, oh, we always call it the haunted house, um, and I'll leave for another day whether the house is haunted. <laughs> there, are, there are stories about ghosts there. And um, now that you are inviting the people to, um, to the house, uh, after COVID, you think everything is going back to normal? We're not quite back to normal. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Because we have a lot of older members, they're not yet you know, confident that getting back together in a small space is safe. So because people are still getting COVID, we're still doing things remotely. But I want to emphasize that when we do things remotely, which include, for example, inviting speakers to um, give a talk about a new book or what have you. Uh, we always advertise to the public. These events are always free to the public. And we invite the public to um, you know, use the Zoom link and join us uh, remotely. In the future, hopefully even in beginning in 2023, we will move back to the house and have our lectures and speakers there. But for now, it's a kind of an interesting way to make new friends, right? Because some people have joined us by Zoom from, from far away. So the benefit, uh, I don't want to call it a benefit from COVID, but one of the advantages of doing things remotely is that people who don't necessarily live close by, so may not have made it in person, have been able to join our, our speaker series events by just logging on to Zoom. That's great. We it, had is, a, it is an advantage of our, uh, what we went through. I think it's Zoom will stay for a while. It has the advantages. But now, tell us uh, where to join and how much is it? And yeah. you already mentioned it's not only for women. So please, share. Yeah, we welcome everybody. Uh, we're never going to change our name because it has a lot of historic importance. But um, anybody can join. We um, encourage people who are interested to send an email. To, uh, and the email address is info at belmontwomansclub.org. And that's woman with an A, which is intentional because 100 years ago, the word woman was used to describe plural, um, you know, the plural collective of women. Today, it's a little bit awkward grammatically but we're keeping it. So belmontwomansclub.org, send an email, I'll send you an application. We charge people $125 a year, which of course is very cheap and reasonable, but we wanna make sure membership is, 
accessible to everybody and anyone who cannot afford to join, we let them join anyway because a lot of members donate extra money every year to make sure that somebody with financial need is able to be part of our organization. So we really mean it when we say we welcome everybody. That's great. And thanks to uh, the Recreation Department for joining with you. We will have a fun event this Halloween. Please share again date and time. October 28th, 4.30 p.m. at the Homer House, which is 661 Pleasant Street in Belmont, right across the street from the police station. Thank you, Wendy, for being here. Thanks for having me. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.